welcome to episode 3 of No Limits, your weekly PlayStation podcast. I'm your host Zaim, and today we have Aman, Sarah and Yusuf joining us. The stories we'll cover today are the dreaded Jason Schreier article, the PS5 system software update, my impressions of Oddworld Soulstorm, and a fun topic about which TV series or films we would like to see adapted into a game. But first, let's ask Sarah what she's been playing this week. Well, um, I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla on Friday night to participate in the Ostara uh, event before it ended. Um, I managed to pick up all the um, decoration of this event that I was uh, interested in and took some virtual photographs. Then I started my um, first game of Days Gone, of course. <laughs> I was able to try the photo mode of this game, which I, is just excellent and very complete. It's just a pleasure to, to play and take pictures of this game. Nice. I know I need to reinstall it and and try and get into these um, sort of, uh, DLC events that they're doing. It, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, what about you, Yusuf? What are you playing at the moment? Are you chasing any trophies? I've been playing Last of Us 2 again to get a platinum for that game. I'm really close to getting a platinum in that game. I think the trophies are um, the fully upgrade your guns for both Ellie and Abby, and then find all coins. That's I think only um, is for Abby, and unlock all player upgrades, which is for both of them, both both characters. So these are the um, trophies I need to get for the platinum, well, which I left to get. And the other game I've been playing is Predator Hunting Grounds. If you guys haven't heard of it, it is a survival multiplayer co-op game. And trust me, it's actually fun if you guys play it. Yeah, I've heard of Predator Hunting Grounds. I think they had a beta at some point, but I was too late to download it, unfortunately. I, I may well give this a try um, during one of the dry months. Aman, what are you playing? Right now, I'm playing a bunch of Outriders. I'm loving that game, especially co-op is amazing. Um, also Metal Gear Solid 5, Phantom Pain, I'm enjoying that one as well. I dropped it off for a while, but now I'm picking it up again. So yeah, that's what I'm playing this week. I have been playing Oddworld Soulstorm. Now look, you guys are probably way too young to remember the PS1, but the first Oddworld game came out on the PS1 a long, long time ago, showing my age here. But me and my little brother were playing it and uh, we absolutely loved it. It had those, um, it has sort of pre-rendered animated backgrounds, which at the time looked amazing. Uh, you could, um, I hadn't seen a game like this before. I mean, I had played a lots of platformers on Mega Drive and stuff, but this, this looked amazing. You, you could talk to, to the other, um, uh, to Abe's friends, or what are they called? Uh, Mudokons. Or Mudokons. I don't know. Uh, you could you could speak to them, get them to follow you, get them to stop, and you'd have to basically clear the way to get them to safety. And uh, it's just the whole the design of the whole thing and the story about these guys being forced to work in this factory and trying to make their way out. Obviously, as a child at the time, I did not get the references to capitalism, but I do now. Um, and I remember the game being so frustratingly hard. And you know, we didn't have the internet back then, or at least not in the same way we do now. So you couldn't just look up a walkthrough. If you were stuck, you were fucked. Um, but so yeah, going, uh, so coming to today, playing Oddworld Soulstorm, it is, it's basically, it, I mean, it obviously it looks amazing. It's a, it's in full 3D, but it still feels like a game that was designed back then. It's amazing to kind of, um, go back to that sort of gameplay style. The controls feel the same as they did back then. It, it requires so much precision and there are so many, so, so, so many frustrating deaths in this game. The advantage now is obviously if you get stuck on one of the sort of more puzzling sections, you can look up a walkthrough online, but still the walkthrough can tell you the solution, but it can't help you with your timing. So if you're shit at it then you'll still be shit after watching a walkthrough like i am uh, i actually encountered a bug um uh, i think two-thirds of a way through the game so i couldn't i couldn't get through and even restarting the console nothing worked it's only after i, I updated the system software that somehow 
that bug wasn't happening anymore. But either way, I, 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 I had nearly given up on the game. I thought, fine, I'll start playing uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising instead. But um, but after the software update, I, I reopened uh, Oddworld and the bug wasn't there anymore. Happy coincidence. So yeah, so now I, w I was happy that I got to keep playing, but I was also annoyed that I had to keep playing because at least before I had an excuse, you know, it's bugged, I can't continue. Whereas now it's like, oh, I have no excuse now, I have to, I have to see this through. And I, I think I'm probably f um, fairly close to the end of the game now, so I may as well finish it, but I'm sure it's going to get harder before it's over. Um, yeah, so uh, you guys, when you get a chance, please play this game. It 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 is fun it is also hard but it is really fun so please please give it a chance let's get into the meat of this podcast for bloomberg article by jason schreier i have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this but first i want to hear what you guys think yusuf well i'm pretty disappointed at sony for cancelling this gun too personally i have actually never completed the game but i watched the full walkthrough online and it was amazing. I really wish they didn't cancel the sequel. Now, back to Last of Us, the Last of Us remake. I mean, what were you thinking, Jim Ryan? The Last of Us 1 just came out 8 years ago. It's not like a Resident Evil 3 game, which came out 1999. And they made a remake of it. I mean, that's okay, because the original game came out years ago. But Last of Us, why? What else can they change? There's already a remastered version for the PS4. And there was an update for the PS5 months back to make the loading time quicker. Now what he'll do is just make the graphics like Last of Us 2. At least they could have made a Last of Us 2 Game of the Year edition and a PS5 version. But no. Instead, Jim Ryan decided to make a remake of a game which came out 8 years ago and already has a remastered. Right, well, there are strong feelings about this, clearly. But but I'd like to point out that it's not just Jim Ryan who makes these decisions. There are a bunch of people at the top who look at the pitch for a new game and decide what to do with it. However, with um, Jim Ryan being the public face, he does attract the ire of all gamers. And Sarah, as a diehard fan of Days Gone, this must have hit you quite hard as well. This is a terrible, a terrible rumor for me as it's my favorite game. I really thought that the sequel was already in development and, you know, this game deserves a sequel so much and I keep seeing it. Um, well, uh, the, the, hidden, the hidden ending of this game with O'Brien proves that the developers had many ideas for a sequel. Um, I even read that they had the idea of making a multiplayer mode uh, where we, are, we would have to kill um, hordes in cooperation and that would have been so cool. But well, um, the, the, this game sold pretty well and I don't understand Sony's decision at all, even if it's just a rumor for now. Um, they prefer to cancel um, an exclusive game that sold quite well, a game that they offer on PS Plus and that they have offered on PS Now last October, I think, um, and on which they are releasing the, PS, uh, the PC version soon. Uh, I think they will release it on the... 18 of May, and they prefer to make a remake of a PS3 game already remastered on PS4. Um, it doesn't make sense, you, you know. Um, in, it's really a shame because this gun is a pearl. It's innovative with its hordes, uh, touching with its story, um, rich with many quests, fun with the bike. Um, well, it's just uh, it's a shame. And I think that Sony don't take risk anymore. They prefer to remix all the game of an existing uh, license that already has fans and that they know um, it will sell well rather than bringing something new. I have the impression that they are doing like Nintendo which releases Mario's every uh, six months, uh, Pokemon, Zelda, you know, all, the, all these, licen these licenses. And where is the creativity in that? There are less uh, new licenses. They prefer to bet on um, big studio like Naughty Dog, for example, with existing licenses, rather than supporting small studio like Ben Studio in their innovative projects. So yes, I like Uncharted, The Last of Us, Assassin's Creed, but I would like to have new licenses, and Days Gone was one of them. Um, and well, 
I know it's just a rumor for now, but I think it's not just a rumor. Um, Jeff Ross, the director of Days Gone, shared the petition on Twitter saying, Oh, well, it's, us it's awesome. Good luck, guys. You know, why will they share a petition for a sequel if there was a sequel in development? Or at least if the sequel hadn't been clearly rejected by Sony? Um, you know, I, I, so I don't think it's just a rumor. I think it's just um, like a news. As for the The Last of Us uh, remaster, I think I won't buy it because uh, I don't need it. Um, besides, it would have, be, have made more sense to do a remake of the Uncharted saga than to make another remake of The Last of Us. Right, well, there's there's been quite a lot of buzz around the article um, on the internet. I mean, Jason Schreier, the author, he, he has written a couple of books about gaming, his journalism has been pretty hard hitting when it comes to stories of crunch at game development studios. Um, now, I know there are strong feelings about this, but it's clear that a lot of people reacting to it haven't necessarily read the article in full, and therefore they fell for the clickbait headlines and conflated a lot of the stories uh, within the article. I've read through it a couple of times and did some further reading and, and listened to some other interviews and hopefully I can try and unpack it a little bit here. Um, so there, the first part of the story was about a team at Sony called the Visual Arts Service Group. Now they primarily acted as a support team for Sony first party games like um, Spider-Man 2018 and the Uncharted series. Now, the leader of that team took 30 developers aside and started working on a remake of The Last of Us Part 1. Yeah, Last of Us Part 1. And, um, however, th this was being done in a seemingly unofficial manner, and Sony didn't fully, fully acknowledge the team nor provide the, the appropriate amount of funding for their work. Instead, Sony wanted the remake to be made by Naughty Dog themselves. Now, bear in mind, that team had already done some work on the remake and then they were pulled away to help with um, finishing The Last of Us Part 2. So after all of that happened, The Last of Us Part 2 was finished, the focus was back on The Last of Us Part 1 remake and by this point that team led by Michael Mumbauer had pretty much given up, they'd largely disbanded and um, a lot of them left including Michael himself. But a large part of the 200 team members were still at, are still at Sony. Don't know what they're doing now, but I really hope they're, they're being given interesting work because they've been supporting studios for a while. You know, they clearly have skills. So give these guys their own game to make. Come on. I mean, to summarize, it looks like this was a group of very talented people who were helping polish some great first party games and they just wanted to apply their talent at making their own game, even if it's a remake. But not only did Sony say no, they also didn't nurture them or encourage them to work on something else that would be their own creation. And that was just the first part of the article. It also goes on to speculate that Sony is focusing on the teams that have already made blockbuster games at the expense of smaller niche titles. However, to counter that, I need to point out that Sony have appointed Shuhei Yoshida as the head of an initiative that focuses on supporting external developers. And it sounds like that initiative will help those external developers or will at least focus on more niche indie and experimental games. And those types of games have historically been part of the PlayStation brand since it started. It's just that these games are now going to be made by third parties and less so by Sony owned studios. Now, for those who don't know, Shuhei Yoshida has been at PlayStation since 1993 since the brand was created. He became the president of SCE Worldwide Studios in 2007 and was a popular figure during the launch of the PlayStation 4. There are loads of videos of him from that time. Uh, so whichever developers he's working with, they're in good hands. We don't need to panic yet. We'll still get those small weird games that some of us really like and that will bring a lot of goodwill to Sony. Now the third part of the article talks about Bend Studio the studio behind Days Gone, which is among my favorite games and is definitely Sarah's favorite. Ben Studio ha also made the um, Saffron Filter series, which I really liked in the early days of PlayStation. Again, you two won't know that because you're too young. And they made the PS Vita Uncharted game called Golden Abyss. Now, I've played that game and it blew me away. 
it really showcased what the Vita was capable of in the hands of a competent developer. Now the studio pitched a sequel to Days Gone two years ago, but it wasn't given the go-ahead. This sucks for a lot of us who had assumed that the game was already in development. I definitely assumed that, and I thought it was going to come out next year or the year after. Hmm. Shows what I know. But look, I'm going to keep an open mind because it's possible that another team could pitch a sequel to Days Gone that does get approved down the line. And also, Days Gone is coming out on PC, I think, next month. So I hope it sells well enough so that Sony is like, hmm, maybe we made a mistake there. Maybe we should make a sequel. And I cannot wait to see what mods um, gamers apply to this game. I cannot wait to see what characters they swap out. That is that is going to be pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, from my understanding, one of the teams, a small team from Ben Studio, uh, from, yeah, from Ben Studio, um, are, have been assigned to work on a multiplayer game with Naughty Dog, which may well be Factions 2. And the main team, the rest of uh, Ben Studio, were assigned to work on a new Uncharted game, with supervision from Naughty Dog. Now the second team wasn't too happy with this, understandably, as even if it's a whole new Uncharted game, it's still Naughty Dog's Uncharted and not their own new IP. So the team complained to Sony and Sony gave them the go-ahead to work on their own new AAA IP, which I am really happy about because even if we don't get Days Gone 2 just yet from them, we're still going to get a new game from this very talented team. So I've tried to be pragmatic about it, but let's see what Aman thinks. First off, I'm very disappointed that Days Gone 2 is not happening. I was really looking forward to play the first one after what you guys had to say about it, but now that the second installment might not be coming, it's kind of a bummer, really. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Days Gone 2. Um, what they they also mentioned that Ben Studio is not going to be a support studio and will help Naughty Dog make games. That was a little vague. Um, so will they be a full support studio now? Are they going to be some like they will they not have their own original games? Are they just going to help Naughty Dog make games? If that happens, that is going to be very very disappointing. That's going to be a very bad move from Sony as well. Ben Studio made some great games. Days Gone, for example, is a great game. It might not have sold well, but it was a good game from what I've heard. Um, so yeah, that is a very disappointing situation going on here. Um, about The Last of Us Remake now. Now that game, see I really like the first Last of Us game. The second Last of Us game I wasn't very keen on, but the first one I really enjoyed it. I've played that one. Uh, that was one of my favorite games of all time. The story was absolutely amazing. Um, does it really need a remake though? Because that game played really well. On my PS4 and I'm hearing it's playing really well on the PS5 as well so do they really need to remake the game I mean I can think think of tons of other games that actually do need a remake like Twisted Metal Infamous the original famous trilogy with um, can't remember his name um, the original Infamous trilogy um, uh, Sly Cooper do these games really need to be remade it's resistance so calm yeah these just keep popping into my head jack and daxter so i'm just blurping them out uh, yeah i think these games are better off being remade instead of you know last of us and you know they could at least remake the uncharted trilogy i don't know why they didn't do that uh, i i heard that it was in the making but it got cancelled because they didn't have the resources and it was taking too much time so that could be a reason but I'm not very keen on this Last of Us remake. Let's talk about the PS5 system software update. Yusuf, what did you notice about it that was new and interesting? Or was it, or were you like me, like you didn't really care? Tell us. So I haven't seen much in this update, but now I think you can store PS5 games in USB extended storage, and you can also share play with someone who's using a PS4. And they also changed some stuff in the game based menu too. And I found out they ha have added more emojis. Okay, well, as uh, I mentioned earlier, it wasn't super useful to me, but you know, still, the, the, like the update process itself was really smooth. It took less than two minutes, and I was back on the home screen quickly and ready to play. Now, as for the features, 
Um, in the update, well first you can now copy your PS5 games over to an external hard drive via USB connection. Before the update you could only do this with PS4 games. Now remember that even if you can now move your PS5 games to external storage, you cannot play PS5 games while it's on the external storage. You need to transfer it back to your PS5's internal SSD. You can now also use a share play function between PS4 and PS5. And for those not familiar with this, share play is a function that would, um, for example, let me share my PS5 screen with Sarah on her PS4 and have her play a PS5 version of um, Days Gone or AC Valhalla, <laughs> even if she's using a PS4. Now, Sarah, we need to try that out at some point. Um, if our internet connections are decent enough, otherwise um, the games will just look like PS3 games. There have also been improvements uh, to parties and the game base, which makes it easier to see what people are up to and easier to join and switch parties, as well as making it easier to manage notifications and game chat volume. Now the game library has also been updated. That is the only part of this update that I will use. So you can now search your library and hide games from view, which makes the library a lot less busy. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to download any kind of trial that comes out, any kind of demo. And over, you know, like 10, 15 years, those tend to start taking up a lot of space. So at least now I'll get to go through that and remove all of those um, um, demos that... Um, shouldn't be there but I've just taken up space. There are also new trophy settings where you can customize the automatic video and photo capture setting to only trigger when you get a specific type of trophy like bronze, silver, gold or platinum rather than all of them. So this should save you some SSD space you trophy hunters. And there's also a bunch of changes that relate to refresh rates but I don't have the hardware to test those, poor me. If you want to know, have a look at the PlayStation website. And finally, for those who haven't noticed already, the update also came with a DualSense software update. So plug in your dual sensors using a USB cable and update that too. I mean, I don't know what changed in the controller, but I just know that the charging icon looks different now, but that that's about it. So. All right, we're done for this section. Let's find out which TV series or films could be turned into a great game. Sarah, why don't you get us started? I wanted to say Jurassic Park or World um, at first, like an open world full of dinosaurs, um, like Horizon Zero Dawn, you know. But that would be a, a bit like Monster in the World, no? I, I don't think. So I'm... I read uh, take the Maze Runner um, movies. Um, I don't know if you if you see the the movies. It was a, a blockbuster, so I think uh, I think you see it. You saw it. Um, we would be uh, Thomas. Um, we would be looking to get out of the maze, but also to improve our camp inside the block. Um, we should go in the labyrinth um, in a given time to look for an exit or resources. And if we don't manage to come back to the block in time, we would spend the night um, in the maze with the creatures that we know uh, thanks for the movies and the books. And I will. I want to say also on the descent. I don't know if you heard and if you saw this um, this uh, movies. It's a, a an horror movie. Um, it's a group of girls uh, go caving and get stuck inside the cave. They have to try to get out, but they will realize that they are not allowed alone in, in the cave. Some really strange uh, creat creatures um, li live there and want to hit them. So, okay, now, now that you know the stories, how about a virtual, photo a virtual reality game No, That will be so cool and very, um, very, um, how do I say, um, very scared, um, like in the first person, you know, maybe, I think, I think it's a, I think it will be a great, a great game for, uh, for an horror game. Ah, so Maze Runner would be kind of a survival slash, um, puzzle game, right? And The Descent would be like a crazy 
scary <laughs> sort of game. I mean, I reckon I'd be more interested in that one. In my case, I think The Mandalorian would make a great game. Imagine if the story was set before the TV series, where he's just a bounty hunter, bounty hunting his way across the galaxy, third person action adventure. You unlock more gadgets as the game progresses, and once you get the jetpack, you can return to pre previous levels and get access to new parts of it, a little bit like Metroid. Um, I think this, this would also be a chance to meet um, lesser known characters and species in the Star Wars universe without affecting the main canon. In terms of films, the upcoming Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I think that would make a cool game. I know, I know the film isn't out yet, but it's also meant to feature Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, quite, quite heavily. And I don't know if you guys have played um, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions a decade ago, but that game had four different Spider-Man from different eras, so the gameplay style varied for each of them. It had third person and first person sections. Now imagine Doctor Strange and Wanda hopping across different universes, meeting different versions of Marvel characters that we know and love. I, I reckon that would be pretty fun to play. Uh, Yusuf, I, I can see you brimming with excitement there. I bet you've got quite a few that you want to list off. Go on. Now this will be fun. Let's start with Stranger Things. I think there's already a Stranger Things game. I'm not exactly sure, but it's not like a proper first person or third person game. So in the Stranger Things game I'm thinking of, they should turn it into a third person game, uh, but they should do it in the same universe as the Stranger Things TV show, and you play as different characters in the game. Uh, the characters might be like their friends or someone, but like somebody totally random who you don't see in the TV show. They, I think this could be a really good multiplayer game and because you know maybe they could put four characters in the game and you could play this game up to four players so this might be the game might be similar to uh, Back 4 Blood or Left 4 Dead not exactly that much action because Stranger Things doesn't have zombies and stuff but they could make like a proper story game I think yeah they could have made like they could make a game a proper like a story game so you only and you could only play that game with your friend your, one of your friends or like all of them you cannot complete this game alone maybe there'll be like some missions where you have to play this game alone to make the game more similar to the actual uh, tv show you could you know um let's say so let's say if the actual characters are in the game mike dustin lucas so imagine these three characters for now, right? And I choose Mike. Um, so you can actually choose the characters in the start. If, you know, there was a change in the game. You choose, before you start the game with your friends, you can choose which character you want to be. So if I just uh, choose Dustin, I have to be Dustin the whole, the until I finish the game. So if, you know, I choose Dustin... My other friend chooses Mike, and my uh, the, my other other friend chooses Lucas. So we have to be the same character till the end of the game. And let's say the first mission we all start together in the same you know in the same game. And then there'll be certain missions where you have to complete it alone, as in, yeah, as in like a solo game. But then the most of the missions will be as a group, and then you find L which is 11, but 11 won't be a playable character. She'll just be like a computer character that, you know, just follows you around and like in certain places missions. So I think they should do that. Now I think I changed my mind. They should actually make it with the same characters on the TV show because that, be that would actually be better. Now my second one is a Mission Impossible game. Now there has actually been two Mission Impossible games in the past. And one of them was like amazing and actually Tom Cruise, I think, voice, you know, had his voice in it. And the second Mission Impossible game was Operation Surma. I think that was a total flop and Tom, Clu Tom Cruise actually did not um, voice his character in the game. I think, I think it was a flop. Uh, I think that was called Operation Mission Impossible Operation Surma. And I think they should make it similar to the Hitman games um, and 
to do that, the only company I would want to make this game will be IO Interactive because they have made the Hitman games and they are working on a new James Bond game. Now the third movie I would want to see as a game is Extraction. It's on Netflix, I think that came out March 2020. I think they should make this game a first person game and um, it takes place in Bangladesh or India because I don't think there are a lot of games that take place in India. Now my last one would be Peaky Blinders. It could be similar to the Mafia 1 game. Now the Waf- Mafia 1 takes place between 1990 the 1930s and Peaky Blinders take, uh, takes place um 1919. So they have they might have some similarities. Come on. This is this is an interesting one because um I watch a lot of TV show uh, TV shows and stuff. So um I think the first one I'm going to say is The 100 on CW. It just recently ended, I think, back in August. They aired their final episode. I That show was incredible. I really liked, I think, seven seasons worth of good content for seven games. <laughs> yeah, uh, that game should be one. Uh, the next one I would like is is The Boys on Amazon Prime. I think that show is phenomenal. The way it portrays superheroes, I think that's never been done in a game before. That game would make us, that would make us, that TV show would make a solid game in my opinion. A uh, great cast as well. I hope they get the voice actors and the same, uh, c- the same cast members for, you know, uh, for the motion capture and stuff. Um, it would be a really interesting game playing, you know, from um, Huey's perspective and how superheroes are evil in this universe so yeah i think that those are the tv shows i would like to see uh, within a video game and adaptation now as for movies um this is an interesting one i would really like to see tenet see i'm a big christopher nolan fan and his movies are so abstract and i think they will make great games especially tenet it's an action-packed time-bending movie would be a decent game It'll be hard. It'll be a hard game to make, so I'm not so sure about it. But yes, if you're t- talking about superhero movies, I would love to see a Deadpool game. A Deadpool game would be absolutely mind blowing. It would be amazing. Like I think there was a Deadpool game back in the day, but I, that didn't get reviewed very well. I play. I remember playing it on my Xbox 360. It was a fun game, but I need a new Deadpool game. Great action, you know, Batman Arkham style action, Deadpool's quirkiness and all that stuff. I think that will make a great game. Hope that happens someday. We're clearly all excited about these imaginary projects. So if there are any game devs out there listening, you're welcome. Now, please go and make those games. Please, please, please. We'll check back in four years time and see if any of these have actually happened. Thank you all for listening. Please do follow us on whichever streaming platform you're using so that you can get notified when new episodes are posted. You can contact us on Twitter at nolimits underscore PS. You can see Sarah's virtual photography work at Calisera1998. So that's at C-A-L-I-S-A-R-A-H 1998. Aman at A-M-A-A-N underscore M05. Yusuf at Y-J-S-Y-E-D-S. And myself at Z-X-A-E-E-M on Twitter. Contact us there, send us your suggestions for future topics, and tell us what you're playing. Thanks again. Goodbye.